for the next project, I'm gonna try to. I want some audio in the MG, so I'm I'm thinking of ways to make it work so that it's not something new. Obviously, I want it um, to be as stealthy as possible. I have a blanking plate right now where the radio would go, and I. I'd actually like to keep that um, with all the new, not new so, so much anymore, technologies such as Bluetooth. It makes it easy to make a pretty uh, stealthy install and then use your smartphone as the audio source. So what I've got, obviously, is the speaker hole here in the MG, and I'm trying to figure out something, a way to to um, make that work for me. So what I've come up with is this box. It's kind of a weird shape hole to fill, but I got this box here that will will fit in it. So it basically goes right down in there and then sits down in place and then obviously the front molding plastic molding um, with the speaker grill will go on in front of that but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do obviously it's it's um, right now It's a little rough. I'm gonna clean it up, obviously, and I'll show you how to make it. Basically, just some wood and uh, some pretty cheap speaker parts, and I'll give you uh, a list of all the uh, parts I use to make it, and I'll go over uh, some of uh, the manufacturing process I used. Okay, here's all the pieces broken out, and I'll have a link in the description of where you can find the parts. I have uh, this cone that's made to be a port and a speaker that I had to obviously modify. Um, I didn't want a big, huge port like this um, for these little tiny speakers, and I wanted it separated, so I... I cut it out. This is the piece of wood that goes in the middle. And I, I cut it out so that I can half this port and make the two channels left and right separate separated from each other. So I also have um, these. I could make the whole thing internal mount the amp that I have to the inside of the rear plate but I'm uh, I'm not sure what amp I'm going to use right now I have this small little 30 watt amp that I got off of uh, Amazon but I'm probably going to end up going with something else let me see if I can get the part number for you there you go um, I'm probably going to go with a 50 watt uh, 50 by 50 watt unit um, so and that that this one will be mounted externally the other one will I'll probably modify and uh, mount it internally on the inside of of the back plate and maybe I'll uh, show how I changed it to accept that other amp but for now, I'm going to just mount it with this 30 watt amp. This is going to be external. And then I'm going to have the leads go inside um, the unit with these simple parts I bought. I think I bought all of these uh, speaker parts off of eBay or Amazon. But I'll uh, throw a link in the description to where I got them all. Alright, now I'm just going to paint the front. I'm going to paint the back. I'm going to leave the the bottom the way it is uh, just wood you're never gonna see any of these pieces so I'm just basically painting them for my own 
um, my own enjoyment really. Um, other than that, it's just standard wood. Um, I just got some wood laminate. And then the side pieces are just this really thin but stiff um, fiber board, I guess. And this is really easy to work with on these weird angles. I had to cut uh, some weird angles to make this work. So that's why I used this for the sides because it's, it's really easy to cut with a Dremel and you can make all kinds of weird shapes and it's, it's um, not nearly as hard as cutting a piece of wood into a weird shape like that. Obviously I used um, some hole punches to make these um, cuts and I got this nice handy tool right here that accepts a bunch of different size. You can kind of make it several different sizes and you just find the right one that works with your application um, for, for punching the holes for these in the back and then the speaker holes and then the hole for the port. So right now I'm going to paint it and then put it all back together and then wire it and I'll show you uh, some of the wiring in a bit. There's very minimal uh, electronic work in this build um, and I'm sure most of you know how to solder so I'm not going to belabor the point. I'm just soldering on these wires to the uh, back plate so that they'll uh, we can get audio from exterior amp to the speakers. In order to uh, put, I'm putting it back together now. Um, in order to further separate the two sides, I've I've created some pieces, just cut out some pieces of foam, and stuck it uh, to the back of the center plate. And then when I put the back on, it should compress that all down and and make a nice seal against the back. I've also cut a couple pieces some uh, half moon pieces to fit inside of the um, port just to make sure that uh, just to, to see if it'll keep some some of the uh, sound deadened and uh, from from uh, passing in between the two halves I don't know how any of this is all going to sound, but uh, we'll see. This is a picture of the uh, front, obviously, before I painted it. Um, what I want you to notice in this picture is the on the port, um, just so I can explain how I made the port fit. Um, there's not a lot of room for this size of a port. It's, it's probably too big for this application, actually, but um, I, it's the only thing I had. So... Um, in order to fit it in between the speakers, I had to use my Dremel and a um, basically a sanding bit to sand out those little scoop shapes um, at the 11 and 2 o'clock position um, in order to fit around the speakers. Um, for the back of the port, the way I cut it, I cut it in, on an angle to meet up with the back of the entire unit, and that I cut also with a Dremel with a cutting bit. Uh, this next picture just shows you the back uh, rough before I finished it. I, the only thing I did to the back was uh, I put the two holes in for the speaker wire connections and I also just painted it and that was it. 
on this shot you can see the final uh, product for the front I uh, put the the center divider that you can see through the port there divides both halves left and right and it also uh, it keeps the sound um, the, the airwaves from both sides from from reaching each other and interacting with each other it ended up sounding pretty good that way so um, I'm gonna keep it and also on this picture you can notice um, that I put a lot of I put a lot of pretty hefty screws in the things the things pretty uh, pretty well stuck together it's not coming apart anytime soon so uh, I would have liked to have probably glued the whole thing uh, just to keep the air uh, and I probably will on the final uh, version just to, to seal up all the air holes exterior but I'm not planning I plan on checking out the sound for a while and then I might end up changing the amp to something different so I didn't want to glue it together yet yet so the back is not glued on and the the side and the top pieces aren't glued on the only thing that's glued is that center the center piece the divider in this picture you'll notice that uh, the back is painted and the the two uh, speaker wire connectors I found that I didn't have enough room at the back to mount them on the outside and screw them in from the outside in so I mounted them on the inside and used uh, just small little stubby screws to screw them from the inside out kind of installing them backwards from what they're intended to be but that way it gives me an extra couple millimeters of uh, room on the back side so I can push the whole unit into the speaker hole inside the MG a little bit more. On this shot you can see it uh, roughly put into place. You can also see the front plate. Um, I'll show you in the next shot what uh, I did to modify the the plastic speaker grill um, and I mounted the speaker uh, the amplifiers knob the volume knob on my my little 30 watt amp so that it it comes through the front and it worked out pretty well came out uh, fairly seamless and it, and it looks pretty good um, because that's the only thing you can really see from the outside of the uh, from the passenger compartment of the car it's the only thing you can see that will tell you that there's anything different uh, also I just ran the wires underneath um, and it up to the amp that's pretty standard and I also I connected the power lead that you see there just goes directly and I just spliced it into the the brown wire that's underneath uh, the dash. There's, there's a brown lead that is standard uh, lead for the, uh, the stock radio and that is a uh, hot lead that's hot right off the battery. I might end up connecting it later to a switched lead that, that's only on when the, the um, when the key is turned in the ignition uh, but uh, for now I just took it up with that and, and it has a switch it's a, a switched power so that I can turn it off and on and I'll show you in the next next picture um, we'll show you where I put the uh, hole for the just a toggle switch so here you can see um, how I mounted the amp the front, uh, the volume knob, just pulls straight off of the amplifier and then there's a, a small nut that holds uh, the volume knob uh, inside or to the actual unit. So I just took that small nut off and put it on the outside and then screwed the unit into the, the plastic uh, speaker grill. Uh, also in this picture you can see 
uh, in the upper left of the shot, you can see a, a bigger hole underneath the underneath the top screw hole that holds the unit in. And that is where I mounted the toggle switch, the on-off switch for the amp. And I'll show you a different shot of that once it's all installed there in a second. Alright, in this shot you can see that toggle switch and where I put it. Uh, so it's it's right there. It's, it's pretty much hidden. You can't see it. Uh, this shot obviously you can see it because the camera is down below, but you're when you're at eye level um, in the car, sitting in the car, you can't really see the toggle switch, but you can just feel for it. I can feel for it underneath the dash and easily turn it off and on whenever I want. Then in this last shot, you can see where that volume switch pokes through and I put the knob back on. So it, it's a pretty clean install. Uh, it looks pretty good. I put some you can kind of see the speaker tweeters through the mesh of the uh, speaker grill. Uh, I'm not sure I, I like that too much. I'll probably put um, another a piece of felt, like black felt, that's thicker um, behind the gold mesh of the speaker grill, in between the gold mesh of the speaker grill and the tweeters so that you can't see anything behind there. You just see the gold mesh and then it'll leave just blackness behind there. So that's probably another modification I'll make, which should be pretty easy. i just pull it off and, and put a piece of felt back there. And that is uh, basically it for the install. It was uh, fairly easy. Um, probably some changes I would have made is I would have mounted probably wouldn't have put the port in. I probably would have just put a, uh, a divider in the middle. Another change I probably would have made if I had to do it all over again is I would have mounted the speakers down lower, which would have given me more room and I could have, then I could have made the whole unit skinnier. It's a little bit, a little bit too deep for the, the uh, speaker hole in the MG, so I probably would have liked to make it a little more shallow and that way I could push the unit back into the speaker hole a little bit more. But it works for now. There, these, the gap you see there on the top of the, the plastic uh, speaker grill is only visible at this angle. Uh, when you're at eye level sitting in the car, uh, you can't see that gap and really that gap was there even even before I did this install so it's it's just that's just the way it it, it is in the MG so that's it uh, I hope you enjoyed it and look in the description I'll have a link to the parts that I used for the install and, and where to find them and also I'll, I'll have a link uh, to the uh, the sizes of the wood cutouts that I that I used so you can uh, make one for yourself that's it